Hello everyone, welcome to problem 3.17 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. So, this problem statement says to derive um, the third um, Legendre polynomial from Rodriguez's formula, and then check that the third polynomial satisfies the angular equation, and for which the, so the Legendre polynomials are solutions to the, uh, this differential equation here. And then also check that P3 and P1 are orthogonal by explicit integration. So, okay, so Rodriguez form, uh, formula here is sort of like a factory function for generating uh, any um, Legendre polynomial. So this is, uh, in terms of L, this is what it is. So if we want the third Legendre polynomial, we'll just plug in L equal to three into this formula. So we have one over two cubed, which is eight, times three factorial, which is six. Um, we'll have the third derivative, and then we are cubing x squared minus one. So all I did is write all this out, so I have one over eight times six, and then I am doing nothing with the derivatives yet. And we have x squared minus one all written out. So first, I you know eight times six is 48, and then I am multiplying this out first. So Doing the first two terms, you get x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1, and then times another x squared minus 1. Then doing this multiplication, you get x, x to the sixth power minus 3x to the fourth power plus 3x squared minus 1. So cubing this gives you uh, this. So now what we have to do is take three derivatives of this function. So Taking the first derivative, we have you know our constant out front, but we have um, 6x to the fifth minus 12x to the third plus 6x. And then taking another derivative, we have 30x to the fourth minus 36x squared plus 6. Then one more time, we take another derivative and we get 1 over 48 times 120x cubed minus 72x. And if you divide 120 by 48 and set negative 72 by 48, you get 5 halves x cubed minus 3 halves x, which is what the third Legendre polynomial is. So this function does correctly generate the Legendre polynomials. So that's part one. Now we have to take this uh, polynomial and see if this function is a solution to this differential equation. So the angular equation is 1 over sine theta d by d theta of sine of theta times d theta by d theta, and I'm writing capital theta, the actual function name, as capital theta, kind of like looks like a square with a line through it, and then the actual parameter of the function theta is the circular theta. So try not to get that confused. And so this side equals negative l times l plus one times capital theta. And so our function, capital theta, is going to be our Legendre, Legendre polynomial that we're plugging in. So we're checking if this is a solution. So this is actually going to be the third Legendre polynomial. So um, we basically just have to um, write this in terms, the, the, the Legendre polynomial in terms of cosine of theta. So P3 of cosine of theta is 5 halves cosine cubed minus 3 halves cosine theta. And then I guess I just wrote this out as 1 half. I factored out cosine of theta. And so we have 1 half cosine theta times 5 cosine squared minus 3. So essentially to check this equation, we just have to calculate each of these like uh, separate parts of the function. So the first thing we do is calculate the derivative of our function with respect to theta, or derivative of this with respect to theta. So that is going to be negative 1 half sine of theta times 5 cosine squared of theta minus three um, plus one half cosine theta times 10 cosine theta. Um, I think that's a, is that a minus negative sine theta? I did this problem a while back, so I haven't, um, it's kind of not fresh in my memory here. So this becomes, I, oh, okay, I think that's a times, it's times negative sine theta. So, um, you basically have to do chain rule here to do the derivative. Um, and so from here, let's see. Um, I'm just trying to make out, work out my own logic in my head here. So what did I do? So I factored out the half. And so I think that's really all I did. 
So the sine theta times that minus, so the minus sine, so minus 10 cosine squared. So I multiply, yeah, so, that, so that, that's just basically multiplying through. So you get minus 10 cosine squared theta times sine theta um, with the one half factored out. Then we're also factoring out sine theta. So we get one, minus one half sine theta times five cosine squared theta minus three plus 10 cosine squared theta. Um, and we also factor out the minus sign as well. Um, so from here, looks like, all right, so this line here, um, I figured out is we're just combining these terms. So we have a 10 cosine squared or five cosine squared. So this just becomes 15 cosine squared theta minus three with the negative one half sine theta factored out. And then just pulling out a three, it looks like we get minus three sine, or minus three half sine theta. Um, 15 divided by three is five cosine squared theta minus one. So it looks like I stop here. So this is what the derivative of our function is with respect to theta. So we're gonna just keep that result in mind. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna highlight that just so we can keep track of that. So for the next part of the equation we have to evaluate is d by d theta of sine of theta times this. So we just calculated this part and if we multiply this by sine of theta, we get minus three half sine squared of theta and the rest is the same, so we just get a sine squared. And so we're taking the derivative of this now with respect to theta. So again, this is gonna be a product rule, uh, product rules and chain rules. Um, so again, if you don't recall the product rule, we're gonna take the, you know, how I do it is like the derivative of the first term times this plus this times the derivative of the second term. So if you, if you do this, if you do the product rule here, you should get minus three sine of theta cosine theta times five cosine squared theta minus one. So that's the first part of the product rule plus three halves sine squared theta times 10 cosine theta times sine theta. So if you do the product rule, that's what you should get. Um, and then we are essentially just simplifying here. So we keep the negative three sine theta cosine theta out front and ah okay so all right so starting back on this line we have this sine theta cosine theta term in both of these so we essentially just factor out um we factor out minus three sine theta cosine theta and so that leaves us with 10 over 2 with a minus sign here so this term is out and then we just have five cosine squared theta minus one and it becomes a minus five sine squared of theta by factoring out negative three times sine theta, theta cosine theta from both of these terms. And from here, it's just a matter of kind of taking away parentheses. So we have the factor out front times five cosine squared of theta minus five sine squared of theta minus one. And then let's see, we rewrite sine squared of theta in this next line as one minus cosine squared of theta with everything else the same. And then we have this is minus three sine, sine theta cosine theta out front times, so when we convert this, this is five minus negative, co, uh, minus, minus five times negative cosine squared, so that's five plus five essentially. So we get 10 cosine squared of theta and then negative five minus one is negative six. And so then this becomes a, the result of this function, this part. So d by d theta of sine theta of this from this equation is this. Then we just divide that result by one over sine theta, or, or we just divide by sine theta. And so that gets rid of sine theta there. So we just have negative three cosine theta times 10 cosine squared minus six. And so, um, for L equal to three, we need to evaluate. So we've got the left side of the equation evaluated. Now we just need to do this side. So for L equal to three, negative L times L plus one times the third Lagrange polynomial is, so negative 12, because just doing that multiplication times the third Lagrange polynomial, which is five halves cosine cubed minus three halves cosine theta. And then let's see, we just, 
Looks like we factor out a half, so we get negative six out front. And then we factor out a cosine theta, so we get negative three cosine theta times 10 cosine squared theta minus six, which is exactly what we have here. So we've essentially shown that the left, by plugging in this function, we get an equality. We get that this side equals this side um, by just showing this here, right? This is the result for the left side. This is the result from the right side. So we have shown that the third Lazarga polynomial satisfies the angular equation. Now, just real quick, short and simple, we just need to show uh, that the third uh, Legendre polynomial and the first are orthogonal, which means we integrate over a region, in this case, negative one to one, and we integrate and, and multiply those two functions. So what we get is the third Legendre polynomial is one half five x to cubed minus three x, and then the first Legendre polynomial is just x, so we pull out the half factor as a constant and we just integrate this function. So multiplying through, we get one half times the integral of five x to the fourth minus three x squared, which just, you know, these are two separate integrals. So we have one half times x to the fifth evaluated from one to negative one minus x cubed evaluated from one to negative one. And we essentially get one plus one minus one plus one. So we get zero. So um, two functions are orthogonal when you do this sort of integration and multiply them and integrate over a, a region and then uh, you get zero. So that's, that's how you prove with orthogonality between two functions. So there we go. If you guys do have any questions on anything that I did on this side or on the other side, please uh, feel free to let me know and I will see you guys in the next video.